promised. Now time for our one-on-one -on -one with Lopini Katoa, BYU football running back. I talked with him following the scrimmage yesterday on the Deseret First Credit Union hotline. Lopini, what's the first thing that runs through your mind when I say season opener in a little over two weeks? Honestly, it's grateful, honestly. There's so much uncertainty now that it's like right around the corner and, and it's pretty set in stone. It's, it's nice to know that we're playing because all this time it's just been so uncertain. So I'm just saying grateful is like the, the feeling I have. Obviously, you were part of a live practice today and you wanted to accomplish some major things. So what did you accomplish as a BYU football team today in this most recent live practice? I think just being able to move the ball um, as an offense and just so that we can make plays and finish drives. And I think we did that a lot today, and I feel really confident in the direction we're heading for sure. So there's always this funny uh, tug of war going on between offense and defense in fall camp. The offense, according to reports, has had their way uh, in most practices against the defense. Does this give you great hope for the offense, or does this give you more concern about the BYU defense? Uh, you know, in, in my opinion, like we did, we've been doing our thing, but I, I feel like it's pretty balanced. I, I don't know what the reports are, but um, in my eyes, I see our defense making plays and, and we're making a lot of plays too. Obviously on the offensive side, I want to see my boys making more plays. And so I think there's, there's been a lot of good things from us. Um, and the defense has also stepped up a lot of times and, and made turnovers and things like that. And so I honestly just feel really confident in, in going into week one um, as a whole team. Lopini Katoa with us on BYU Sports Nation. The goal is to become more consistent and to win more games than last year uh, when you finish seven and six. So why do you feel like this version of the BYU football team will be better and more importantly, more consistent in the win column this year? I feel that we just have like a, a more resilient mindset to to not be okay with just good not just driving the ball um, getting in the end zone is the only acceptable thing to us when we started drive and and that's what we've really focused on this camp and I feel like it's shown we've, we've scored a lot of touchdowns this camp Lopini if asked to do so how do you feel about being the number one back and carrying the ball I don't know 15 times or more per game that's the goal, right? I feel, I feel great about that. Um, yeah, I'm ready and willing. I know that there's other dudes in the room who feel the same way. And, and with that being the case, I feel like it's, it's just all good things come from that. How do you feel you have improved the most and put yourself in a position to be the number one back? Uh, I just been working hard every day just to, to be reliable. Um, I feel like I can do multiple things. I can be the guy who can run the ball, block, catch the pass if you need me to. So I feel like uh, I'm just really versatile in, in what I can bring to the table and, and reliable in my responsibilities. You talked about the uncertainty of the 2020 schedule and just how many unknowns there have been. So with the movement that you have seen and the football schedule as it is right now, what do you think about the seemingly constant changes and uh, last minute additions happening? Uh, I've learned just all 2020 just to take it one day at a time you know <laughs> it's it's crazy times we're in right now so if we have one game we have 10 um you know, i'm just taking it one day at a time and and grateful for the the schedule that we have thus far and, and hope to fill it up now right now you're opening the season at navy and at army you know that they're going to be prepared they're going to play hard what do you expect in those games against the service academies um, I, I just expect like a disciplined team, you know, and, and a bunch of hard workers. So we got to be on our A game, not hurt ourselves and, and just play our game. Um, it's hard to beat us when we're playing at our best. And no question, it's going to be a strange atmosphere when you play in Annapolis against Navy. Uh, it was announced earlier this week that there are going to be no fans there. How do you generate energy as a team in a stadium with no fans? <laughs> That's a good question. I've... I've yet to experience that. And so like, I guess just, just uh, encouraging each other. And I mean, playing another team will bring its energy in itself. Uh, just that competition 
uh, that game day feeling. Hopefully they can uh, get that as much as we can without the stadium being filled. But, um, yeah, we'll just work with what we can and, and try to energize each other. The microphones are going to be extra sensitive, and so uh, some voices will be heard. Uh, are, are you okay with national television and uh, uh, guys being heard? <laughs> Hey, I'm comfortable with what I say, so <laughs> <laughs> I can say that, that I'm all right. I'll be all right. Fair enough. Uh, what do you know about the Navy football personnel right now? How much preparation have you done for them? Um, we've been, you know, going over a little bit what they do, who they are as a team. Um, and we know that it's going to take a lot of tough preparation um, because of what they can do on defense, the, the, the like the – different looks they'll give you. Um, it's a lot of thinking. And so uh, just being able to be pre as prepared as we can for whatever look they come out in. Lopini Katoa with us on BYU Sports Nation, one-on-one -on -one all access uh, after BYU football practice. The running backs room that you're competing in uh, is un unfortunately had to say goodbye to one of the up and coming freshmen, Bruce Garrett, who left for personal reasons. What's your message to Bruce as he has to uh, encounter a tough situation? Oh, just try to be there for him. We love him. Everybody who comes into the room, we're, we're a little family um, in itself. Like you're close with all the boys on the team, but your position group is a, is just kind of different level. Um, so it's tough to see him go. Um, and I just hope that, you know, he, everything works out for him and that his future's uh, still bright. Maybe the player uh, that will be the answer to this question is in the running backs room, maybe not. But who is the teammate on either side of the ball that has been the pleasant surprise of training camp, in your opinion, thus far? Um, if I'm thinking, are you saying just in my group or, or overall as a team? It could be anybody on the team. Let's see. There's a lot of guys that I have just been stepping up. I Today, recently, um, I was excited to see Shaman Willis make a lot of plays out there. Um, he's been working his butt off, and he's just a good kid, always always trying to get an extra work. And so to see that, you know, pay off for him today and all through camp has been really cool. Well, you had a live practice today. We talked about some things that you accomplished. Um, who looked good specifically in the live scenario today on offense? Um, I'm going to have to always go with the running backs. Uh, it's just fun because <laughs> you're tagging off all, all camp and people are saying you're down here and you think you got extra five yards. And so it's just nice to see it come true. Once uh, people have to tackle us, it's a, it's a different game. And so, we pride ourselves in always falling forward, and that's what I saw today. The backs always were gaining those extra two yards, and I just love to see that. What does the quarterback situation look like from your perspective right now in camp? Uh, it looks – I feel like it's it's what you want, like a, a group of guys who can compete and all push each other each day. You know, Zach, Baylor, and Jaron all have wins under their belt in games, and, um, and so – having that in a room is, is good. It's only going to produce the best product of every single one of them. All right, Lopini, you probably won't, won't want to admit that uh, you are afraid of anybody on the defense, but who's the one guy or the one defender that when you get the ball, you're like, oh, man, I got to go against this guy? Uh, you know, I, I don't know. I, I, really, I, I would say – just seeing Kyrus over there, um, that big dude, he's over there plugging two gaps, standing there. So, I mean, that's a, that's just like a, somebody I'm always looking out for, sure. looking over my shoulder for. But, yeah, no, it's, it's, it's nice having such a good D-line to run against um, to get me ready for, you know, honestly, the best because those guys are working hard and they've been giving this uh, a run for our money. Okay, we'll uh, wrap up here, but I do want to ask you about uh, the NCAA who is expected to rule in favor of athletes who participate in any fall sport, not losing any eligibility, uh, whether you play or not. So how do you feel about the potential of uh, a sixth year at BYU? <laughs> oh, man, BYU, that's funny. All the RMs are going to be about 30 years old when we graduate, if, if that's the case. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, that's nice to know. 
um, to have extra insurance, you could say. But I, I really didn't even know. That's the first I heard of that. Okay, hey, well, I'm breaking news to you. Uh, more importantly, you're focused on the actual football. So you keep doing your thing, and uh, I'll keep doing my thing here in Studio B. Let's give you some BYU Sports Nation karma. We appreciate the time, Lopini. Great to catch up with you. Appreciate you. One-on-one -on -one BYU Sports Nation All Access with Lopini Katoa, BYU running back, approaching the 2020 season. Jason, to quote him, getting in the end zone is the only acceptable thing to us. Yeah, it's been a focus. It's when you're in that position, get in the end zone. That's, that's one of the things they have stressed all offseason long is making sure those drives end in touchdowns. Aaron Roderick, Jeff Grimes, all of the offensive coaches, all of the offensive players, that has been the clear Number one priority is to get better in the red zone. Yep. I'm expecting big things for Lopini. I think he's going to have a huge year. Can't wait to see him coming up.